Honorable members, I want to welcome you to today's sitting. I also want to take this chance to welcome back our colleagues. While you are away, we missed you. But, uh, but we represented the country effectively. But we are happy to have you back. And uh, we'll continue working together as Parliament of Uganda for the good of our country. Veteran Speaker, I thank you. Um, I want to take the opportunity to thank you uh, for understanding us as presiding officers when we took that decision. And the members, because at least none of the members here went out of their way to ostracize us for that decision, which speaks to the extent that we go to understand each other when certain things happen. We are not back because things are okay, but because we are the legislators for our people. Let me speak in uh, responding to your well-intentioned uh, welcome remarks. I want to restate that uh, we want to be well understood as members of parliament, as, as leaders, that uh, for the actions we took, it's not that we encourage uh, crime, but we also understand that uh, this is our country. And when the state is acting to curb crime, it matters such act within the limits of the law. Our friends were produced before court, and we still make the same demands that due process is followed and that the exercise to a quick, transparent, and fair trial so that them and other citizens uh, can see the beauty of being ruled under the law, not by the law. Finally, Mr. Speaker, finally, in the same breath, during my response to the State of the Nation address, I listed 19 citizens that had disappeared not after they disappeared, that we had been arrested variously by state actors from their workplaces and from their homes. Uh, if you go to page eight and nine of my response, the sort of the nation, those citizens are well enumerated. But no speaker, we never got a response from government on those citizens. And uh, it's business as usual. Through that, no speaker, I take leave whether it wouldn't be procedural okay to demand that you instruct government to respond on the fate of those citizens that disappeared and were taken by state actors. They're not in a court, a trace in any prison has not yielded any output. So we don't want to leave parliament next time because of those 19 citizens. Would it be okay, Mr. Speaker, if we order? You have the Minister of State here, the Minister of, uh, I mean, Security here, to commit to come to Parliament and uh, explain the way about all those 19 citizens and enlisted. Probably could even tell us more, but not, whose names we not capture. They have never been produced in any court. So that their families can settle as to the fate of these citizens, right on the speaker. And right on the speaker, I want to put to note the House that uh, we shall present a motion to Parliament for Parliament to investigate the human rights violations over the last 24 months, including murders and the disappearance of the right speaker. I thank you. Thank you, Leader of Opposition. Uh, government, you've had uh, the concerns. You will have to come with uh, a written statement 
on what was raised in response to state of nation address. And you see how we can have that resolved. But before you, you come, we can have a meeting together with the leader of opposition. We could actually have a meeting on Thursday and get a way forward towards that.